All right, it is time for a tag video. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. This is going to be the Books and Life tag, which was created by Steve Donahue. I've definitely seen this one making the rounds. Um, I know Amy from Zoe Beck did this one, and Sarah from... Oh, I almost did it again. I almost said Steeped in Books, the bookish knitter. I said that in one of my videos recently. I was like, wow. <laughs> I still remember when Sarah's channel was Novel Expectations. So anyway, Sarah from The Bookish Knitter has also done this one, and I will leave links to their videos plus Steve's video as well as the prompts down below. This is a chatty one, and uh, I, I like that. I like doing type videos that are chatty ones. Um, so first up, the first prompt is on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being a normal person and 10 being the late Harold Bloom, how much are books and reading a part of your life? This one I found really interesting because, and I found it really interesting to see people's responses to this one because I think we see people through the lens of booktube, so most of the people I watch who talk uh, have a channel, like all of the, almost all of their videos, if not all of their videos are about books, so it was really interesting to see the numbers that they came up with. I think I'm going gonna go with a 5 for me, a 5 out of 10, because like, which kind of always, like when you think of school, that always feels like failing, so I don't, do I want it to be a 6? Um, so, because, but no, I'm sticking with five because, like, books are part of my everyday life. I read pretty much every day. There's always a couple days in the year I don't read, but pretty much every day. Um, I love making lists. I love, um, like, you know, getting stuff from the library. Um, but I also kind of find that sometimes I spend, like, I feel like I spend too much time, like, what I call futzing, like, organizing and listing and researching and stuff like that. So maybe it actually probably is a six, but I wish it was a five. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have other things that I'm interested in. I actually do, like, I do videos on other things. I do videos on film mostly, um, but also, like, I love TV. Um, I love art. Um, I've been doing a fair amount of gaming this year and do, you know, have in years past done that as well. Um, and that's just channel stuff, you know, and then, of course, there's Life Life. This year I've been having some luck with some of my plants. I've been thinking about doing, like, a, like a plant... Um, a video about my plants which not like anything um like helpful just to show and tell <laughs> you know what I mean like this is this plant and this is this plant you know not by any shape how to take care of plants because I've had the worst luck with that um over the years but this year I've had better luck with that so anyway you know and I love to draw especially I like to draw my plants um and yeah so I don't know so I'm going with five I'm gonna, gonna stick with my answer um but um but yeah I think I actually wouldn't mind spending a little less time you know um futzing around with my spreadsheets and stuff it's fun. I just find I can get sort of like, you know, black hole sucked into it. And then of course watching booktube. I love watching people talk about, you know, what they're reading and their projects and challenges and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, so it is a fair amount. It's probably more than five, but I'm sticking with five. Because <laughs> five, I think the books and reading part is, is five and then more like the other stuff around it would bump it probably to a six or a six and a half, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to quantify. Number two, where does your personal library stand right now in relation to the rest of your life? Do you have more books now than you have ever had? Fewer? How has your library changed? This is a really interesting question and I, you know, luckily or unluckily have a spreadsheet with most of this documented. I don't know, I kind of feel like when I got the number I was like, it it can't be that. It can't be that. Um, but I knew the part, the number I'm confident in is at the beginning of the year, I knew I had about 250 unread books. Um, but when I looked on my spreadsheet and did a general calculation, uh, there's a lot of duplicates in there. And then there's a lot of like, if one title has like a bind of four things in one, it will be listed four times. So it's not perfect. Um, and then some stuff I've donated, but haven't deleted and blah, blah, blah. So there is margin of error here. There's an estimation, but at the number, the quick check was 650. And I was like, really? <laughs> I was really surprised. I'm like, I have, does that mean I have 400 books that I have read? I certainly don't feel like this. One of the challenges that I have um, is that I don't, um, I don't have room for all of my books out, which I'll talk about a little bit more in one of the further questions. But they're like, the number on the spreadsheet was like, you know, 
that like I really do I have 400 red books like that and that includes everything like you know cookbooks you know nonfiction reference works on like knitting patterns like pretty much every book I have is there so that's a lot that feels like a lot to me um and so yeah I think with that number in mind I would have to say that this is the largest <laughs> amount of books I've ever had although I don't feel like in a weird way I don't feel like it's changed a lot which is totally not true because I did find a couple of places to get really um, good prices for secondhand books and so yeah because I kind of feel like I've had the same books all over but no not the case especially once I started finding bookends yeah, the, when I found, whenever I found bookends, then, which is the Toronto Public Library's permanent bookstore down at the reference library, it's unfortunately not, at this point, not open at, uh, yet again, but the prices are the best in town. So, yeah, when I found there, I just, I went, like, once a season, and so definitely got a fair amount of increases. So, and then in terms of, like, how my library has changed over the years, in some ways, it, I feel like I did at some point decide to split out read and unread books, um, which is something I had never considered before uh, BookTube. Um, and I, But for me, there's some shelves that remain the same, right? Like, this is how I shelf my series books that are my favorites. So this is my, how I shelf my nonfiction, you know, like it's, this goes here and that goes there and this goes there because a lot of the books I've had for a long time now. So it's like anytime I move, I'm like, yep, and that goes there and this goes there and that goes there and these go with those and this goes with those. And, so, and I also worked in bookstores. So I have like a sense of like organization through that. Although like, you know, you can, people can organize their books in any way that they want, but I do have like the way in which I do it. Um, but, uh, but now I do separate out uh, um, read and unread. So that was a big change. And uh, yeah, and it is helpful because when you're browsing, you know, to decide what to read next, it's it's better to have the ones that are, uh, they, but might make me reread less. I don't know. Anyway, I think that is my answer and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Question three, take a mental step back and ask yourself, what is the most likely first bookish impression a newcomer would have to your home? I don't, to be honest, I don't think there would be much because in terms of like the general space where like, you know, someone would come over and have coffee and stuff like that, there's not a lot of books. Like there's, I have one bookshelf that's got more movies than books um, and the books are all like nonfiction art books and nonfiction film books and cookbooks and stuff like that. So there isn't, you know, um, and then all of the books that I'm currently reading, I would put away so that you can have coffee and sweets and, you know, and, you know, vegetables or whatever, like, you know what I mean? Like for, for visiting. And so I don't have lots of books that are on display or anything like that. That being said, if they walk by my pile of library books, <laughs> <laughs> maybe because it is like like 20 right at this point it's 20 and then like another 10 so that's a fair amount of books just all in one spot and then I do have by the door I have my books that are being donated which anyone who comes by even though right now it's COVID so we're not really doing that but um although things are easing and stuff but anyway I always keep a pile of books at the door so if that someone comes by and they would like a book they are welcome to take it <laughs> So there's that. Um, so, okay. So next question. Uh, I, so I don't think that they would have a huge Im bookish impression, to be honest. Um, number four, how often do you, if ever, <laughs> clean or reorganize your books? I'm actually really looking forward to hearing people's answers to this one in particular, especially about cleaning. Um, in terms of reorganizing, I do twice a year uh, switch, like uh, switcheroo because I have not as much. I have more books than shelf space. So usually in January and June, I pull out all of my books that are tucked away and look at for my unread books and then shift around to see what do I think I'm interested in reading in the next six months. And then everything else goes back in the bags. And then I just have a new selection to enjoy for that time period. I try, although this year I forgot to keep out the books that are I wanted to read this year in particular for projects and challenges. So I did have to go digging 
for a couple of particular titles, none of which I've started, but they're at least on the shelf. Um, so I do that twice a year, and I feel like that that's a good refresh, especially if, um, you know, if you walk by the same thing all the time, you don't necessarily, at some point you sort of stop seeing it, so it's nice to have a refresh. Um, and then in terms of cleaning, mostly when I notice it needs it, which is probably not often enough, which is why I'm very curious to hear what people um, do for that or how often that they find is a good amount of time to keep uh, good care for their books. Um, question five, on average, how many books do you acquire in any given week? Given week? <laughs> wow. I don't buy books every week um, or acquire, sorry, yeah, acquire. Um, so not every week, um, but I did do the math and by the end, of, by the time, it was about 24 and we were at the end of July when I filmed this so it's not not quite one a week in terms of books uh, physical books uh, in terms of ebooks um, my purchases were about two a month um, and then I don't count freebies <laughs> for ebooks because you know as long as you have space then I don't I, I don't count it I really don't um, but yeah so I guess one uh yeah so it's it's one to two a week if you put ebooks and physical books together um and this is also because it's decreased because i'm not doing any physical shopping or thrifting for books at all so that really you know and that actually includes my harlequin hauls um that are my yeah my harlequin uh the the reader service uh which i did for three months uh which was three books a month and then there were two extra and then an additional third extra so i really haven't purchased a lot of books this year um so but it's been an unusual year once bookends opens that number is going out the window <laughs> <laughs> Question number six, what song is your current earworm? So so I guess this is part of the life tag, books and life tag. Again, I'm going to be really curious to see um, more responses on this one. Um, there's a couple songs that I have been enjoying. Uh, uh, Yearning by The War and Treaty is a fabulous song. Um, and also Old Soul by Hudson Taylor. I'll link below if I can get a link to my Spotify playlist. I make one every year or that's not necessarily true but I this year I decided to make one for all the songs I'm enjoying this year whether or not they came out this year or not but or whether or not I heard them for the first time this year or not so and I will put that down below if you are interested music always seems to be a bit of a touchy subject in terms of people like it can be something sensitive to share because people people can often be really quickly and swiftly negatively responsive and um which i am surprised at even though sometimes i still do it like you just it's and it's something that we don't often share when we're talking about books it doesn't music doesn't often come up so um yeah so those are but those are two songs that i have been enjoying uh this year and recently they're very early in my playlist so i hear them a lot <laughs> So even though I do put it on shuffle. Anyway, question number seven. What percentage of self-control do you ret retain in a well-stocked bookshop? Sorry, that wasn't very good. What percentage of your self-control do you retain in a well-stocked bookshop? I am pretty good with self-control. Um, and to be honest, a lot of times, like I'm not doing, as I mentioned, I'm not doing a lot of physical, I'm not doing physical browsing these days. Um, but um, in terms of a regular physical bookshop, generally speaking, when I go, there's sort of two situations. One, I'll go to Indigo, which is um, like a Barnes and Noble, a, a Canadian version of that. Um, or it's not, it's our large chain bookstore in Canada. Um, and um, generally speaking, I go to get gifts for other people. I go with a list. I check the inventory ahead of time, or I have a general sense of the, um, you know, areas in which I am looking for, for particular people. And I have, you know, a general, you know, estimated budget. So I'm pretty good. I actually do not go to bookstores for brow to browse for myself in terms of uh, a new bookstore. Now, on the other hand, if we're talking thrifting, <laughs> it kind of mostly comes down to two things. One, budget. I usually set a budget for myself before I go in. Um, if it's somewhere like Value Village, I often limit myself to five um, because if you buy four, you get one free. Um, and so, and I often will either, I will do one trip for 
um, Harlequins because they're like 99 cents so you can get like five for four like 397 plus tax so like four whatever 15 ish um, and then I would do a separate trip for anything else. The reason why I do those on separate trips is that the free book is always the cheapest book and the Harlequins are always the cheapest. So I do one trip for Harlequins and then um, on a separate trip I will do it for everything else. The rest of the books are generally uh, $2.99 to like $6.99 or $7.99 it might be. So it is quite a difference. Um, and so uh, yeah, and so I usually sell myself a budget and I think usually if I get five books, it's like, it's usually sort of $6.99, so it's $7 times four, but you get one free. Um, so that's close to $30. Wow. So generally, hopefully I find some cheaper ones because it's usually more in the sort of 20 to 25 And then if I go to bookends, <laughs> which I mentioned, is the, public li the Toronto Public Library's permanent bookstore, and they have the best prices. Most things are a dollar. And for there, I set myself a budget. I set myself $20. I used, used to go once a season, and when things get a bit more open and back to normal, I'll go back to once a season. And to be honest, that's about as much as I can carry. <laughs> so, and I don't drive. So it's it's mostly budget and um amount I can carry based and I usually stick to it. I don't I don't um you know, I love getting secondhand books. I don't um I don't get uh I I don't look for particular editions. It's just sort of like what's available. Um and so I think that those are I don't know if those are good self-control parameters. Um but uh I'm pretty good to sticking to a budget and you know when those are the budgets that you're working with like 20 to 30 dollars you know that's or five dollars for five harlequins you know I gen and if I can't if it's not in the budget that week or that month or that year then I just don't go <laughs> because why why put yourself through that if you can't do it so yeah I think that's those are sort of the the self-restrained parameters I give myself and then within them I feel free to you know pick whatever I want if it's a bit if if I can afford it and uh, carry it <laughs> Question number eight, do you feel the need to take a break from books? If so, what form does that take? To be honest, pretty rare. Um, I, as I mentioned, I do read pretty much every day. Um, at the end of my May reading challenge of working so specifically on the books on my currently reading, I did need a bit of a break, but that was, I think, from more of like the intensity of the challenge. Like I really spent a, a fair amount of dedicated each, each day, not only to my reading, but like the organizing of it and in the early of the month, the vlogging and stuff. So it's it was a bit more of a break for from the project than the reading itself. Um, I'm more likely to not be able to read if I'm stressed. Um, if I'm stressed, I just don't retain anything. So I'm just sort of like reading things over and over again. And I'm much more likely to do things like rewatch a TV show or organize things or, you know, if things are really bad, clean. <laughs> Which is, it's not the only time I clean, but like if I'm doing like dedicated, like intensive, doesn't have to just then it's like then I'm, I'm then things are rough. But uh, generally speaking, I don't gen like and sometimes after a really big book or hitting a really big accomplishment, then I, you know, I think it's fair and, and fun to take a bit of a break because you get to sort of sit in that moment for a while and be like, yeah, I did it. You know what I mean? Like, so, uh, yeah, but generally speaking, I do read every day and, and, uh, I don't, I would like to sometimes take a break from the, all, like a lot of the planning. I do find I do a lot of futzing. <laughs> Number nine, when you meet a new person, how long does it take to, before you how long does it take for you to bring up books? I don't, to be honest. Um, uh, I really am anti-spoiler. So if I have just met someone, I don't know what their spoiler gauge is. So I am not going to bring up a book, especially since if you're in the situation where you're meeting someone for the first time, the conversation, you know, can be a bit awkward and you don't want to like sort of interrupt the flow of things. So I certainly wouldn't want to like have to like shush someone you know, like upon first meeting them because I didn't want to know about the book that they were sharing or if I had shared a book, if they're like, oh, is that the one where it's like, that's, that's always jumping to 
the end, the reveal, the whatever, the what people know even if they haven't. So it's like, it's just not worth it. So, and that's why I often don't bring up even TV shows until I finish them. <laughs> Is that the one where... <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> really, is it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I actually don't bring it up. Um, and uh, I just would talk about other things. If it comes up, I might, you know, generally say I'm a reader. But again, if I would stick to sharing about books that I've already read, books that are, you know, pretty popular or whatever, um, and sort of see where things uh, go from there. Uh, number 10, have you ever given any thought or made any provisions to your personal li library after you croak? Um, no, <laughs> I, I don't have many like valuable or unique editions, so I don't know that it would matter too much. I imagine it would mostly get donated. Uh, that being said, the, you know, not a, a lot of places don't want donations. <laughs> unless they are valuable or unique or recent, which again is not something that I terribly have a lot of. I do have some folio editions, so they are, you know, a bit more on the valuable scale of things. Um, but yeah, this is not something that I have uh, made any thoughts about. In fact, the only place I know you really can take anything is bookends because they have a drop-off box the outside, <laughs> as long as it fits through. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, you know, I haven't had much luck in terms of, you can donate things like to Value Village or whatever, but in terms of selling them or something like that, or, you know, do I know someone who's had their eye on anything? No, I haven't, I haven't really thought about anything like that. Number 11, are you known among your family and loved ones, sorry, your friends and loved ones as for your weird and probably unhealthy relationship with books? Um, I think maybe in terms of like the amount of projects and tracking and challenges that I do, but not necessarily the reading itself, um, because most of the people I know do read a lot or have been readers or avid readers at some point in their life. Um, so I think I'm in the minority that way in terms of booktube. I'm also probably in the minority in terms of booktube in terms of I'm an expert extrovert, not an introvert. Um, but yeah, like most of like I come from a family of readers, you know, my mom read a lot, my dad reads every day. Um, my siblings studied uh, English, creative writing, drama, history. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of like the odd duck out and being a sort of bit of a, like an autodidact in terms of wanting to like do reading projects and challenges and see my work through lists that are, you know, important or something. I don't know, or meaningful, or are they? Are they if they are to me? All those questions. So I, I do feel like I'm the odd one out, even though I do read a lot. I think I'm known for like reading, but um, I don't know. I think that, but I think the projects and challenges are probably the thing that sort of set me like, you know, people go, hmm, like when I wrapped up all of my books, people were kind of like, hmm, or, or interesting, you know, but, you know, <laughs> and then I unwrapped them all. Uh, well, it was a good project, you know, um, and uh, yeah, so that is the last question. Usually it says, uh, you know, who to tag. Um, I think a lot of people have done this. If you haven't uh, done this one and would like to do it, consider yourself tag. I will leave the questions down below. It was interesting to think about the books from your life and from a different perspective of your life. So it was a lot of fun. And uh, let me know, how often do you clean your bookshelves if you want to? No judgment. I'm really seriously, earnestly, you know, just curious about that. Um, and yeah, because maybe I should do it more often. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching.